Hey YouTube, how's it going? Today I'm going to give you another fallacy. Actually, it's going to be two because of how closely they work together. So let's jump into it. There are two fallacies that work very closely together. They're opposites of each other, but at heart, the same problem leads to both. So stay tuned as I explain to you the fallacies of composition and division. Composition. As I explain this word as a fallacy, you'll start to see how a division is laid out as this is the opposite of division, but I'm still going to go into both in depth for you. So for composition. Composition is best understood when we know what composition means, and in this case it means how something is composed. Uh, what elements together create a whole, and how someone might view the components and the whole respectively. Here's what I mean. The person who may be speaking fallaciously about it will describe character trait of one thing that is a part of the whole, and will, based off of that evaluation of the part, will attempt to describe the whole under the assumption that because a component of the whole has a certain characteristic, the whole also has that characteristic. An example would be something we see all the time, I see this all the time in social media especially, someone will see uh, a member of a particular group do something horrible and based off of that will assume that the whole is also horrible. This comes from both sides. Uh, a common one uh, is when you see news report on an event that happened, let's say a police officer shot somebody dead, and based off of that, people make the assumption that all police officers are bad, because the part, the characteristic which the part has must also be true of the whole. Now for division. With the fallacy of division, which is the opposite of composition, people see a characteristic which the whole has, and then will assume that because the whole has a certain characteristic, then the part must also have the same characteristic. Now, if we were to use the police officer analogy again, but instead of for the composition fallacy, use it for the division fallacy, it can go the opposite way. When somebody reads what a police officer's duty is, and all the things that a police officer stands for, everything seems really good. So, one could fall for the division fallacy by assuming that because police officers stand for a high moral code, that all police officers must be also standing for a moral code individually. Obviously, there is going to be an exception to both the things stated in the composition fallacy and also the things stated in the division fallacy. You're going to have good cops and you're going to have bad cops, ones who follow that high moral code and those who do not. And so it is fallacious to either say that because a police officer is bad that police, pe police officers in general as a whole do not have a high moral code. And it's also just as fallacious to say that because police as a whole stand for a high moral code that, if, that an individual police officer will also live up to a high moral code individually. It's human nature to assume things based on the parts and the holes because it's an easy way for us as, as people to understand something. We often oversimplify things to understand them easier. And this can be a problem with logical thinking, of course, because in an attempt to make things easier to understand, we actually oftentimes become our thinking oftentimes becomes fallacious. So it's ironic. In an attempt to make things make more sense, we accidentally, as human beings, cause the things we're talking about to not make sense. In an attempt to create a more logical thought, we oftentimes create fallacious thought. If you enjoyed watching this video, I have other videos and playlists up on my channel for you to feed that brain of yours. And if you enjoyed this, subscribe so you can never miss out on my videos. You're watching Freedom Thinks with Timothy Rogers. See you in the next video.